2021 went by very quickly, but after testing hundreds of items, 10 items stood out as the best. A good set of screwdrivers is a must-have tool, and out of 11 brands tested, the Wea brand stood out as the best. In the first test, I ground three flat areas on the shaft. I then cut the screwdriver shaft and installed it in a drill. The flat areas on the shaft allowed the drill to maintain a good grip on the screwdriver without slipping. I then attempted to install and remove 53 and half inch screws in the pressure treated 4x4s. Unfortunately, some of the brands couldn't even install half of the screws before wearing out. The amazing German build quality really stood out in the first test. The Wea brand easily installed and then removed 50 screws. Even after installing and removing 50 screws, the screwdriver was still in great condition. The screwdrivers were then tested for failure or cam out load. I used the drill press to apply around 100 pounds of downward pressure on the screwdrivers. Some of the screwdrivers cammed out after only around 60 inch pounds of torque. However, the Wea brand never cammed out and finally broke at 127 inch pounds after installing and removing 50 screws. Very impressive. To test the sawdust screwdrivers, the screwdrivers were placed in a screwdriver holder. Once again, the drill press applied around 100 pounds of downward pressure while a twisting force was applied to the screwdrivers. Some of the screwdrivers broke while others were badly bent at around 60 inch pounds. The Wea brand made this look way too easy, finally losing grip at 115 inch pounds. Having a screwdriver that can handle a strike from a hammer can be a huge benefit at times. The Wea has a strike plate, but can it actually handle a lot of pressure? While some of the screwdriver shafts were driven up into the handle, the Wea stayed tough with over 700 pounds of weight applied to the top of the handle. While the Wea is an investment at around $100, it's a screwdriver that's designed to last and perform like new for a very long time. The Knipex tongue and groove pliers easily made the top 10 list, outperforming 13 other brands. To test the pliers, I put together a test jig that applies right at 100 pounds of squeezing force on the handles. The first test was the easiest test in the competition. The test measured the gripping strength of the pliers on a threaded portion of a bolt. The Knipex finished in the top three at 573 inch pounds. If you're like me, you need not only a set of pliers that can offer a mechanical advantage, but also gain grip on some very hard steel like this socket adapter. And this is where the Knipex totally dominated the showdown. 10 out of 13 brands weren't even able to reach 50 pounds of torque before slipping. The teeth on the Knipex were sharp and hard enough to totally crush the competition at an amazing 257 inch pounds of torque before finally losing grip. What's even more impressive is that the teeth on the Knipex still look to be nearly as good as new, while many of the other brands experienced quite a bit of damage. I then used a large medium hardness bolt to test the ability of the pliers to gain a grip on a large fastener. Most of the brands lost grip before reaching 350 inch pounds. However, the Knipex once again did an amazing job at 1,118 inch pounds or nearly three times as much as many of the other brands. Tool durability and wear resistance is a huge factor in selecting the right tool. To test durability, the wrenches were tested to see how well they could hold on to a bolt for five seconds while the impact wrench hammered away. And the impact wrench made very easy work of most of the other brands, however the Knipex made the impact wrench really work to make any progress. After this grueling test, most of the pliers experienced extensive damage to the teeth, really limiting their future performance. However, the teeth on the Knipex experienced the least amount of wear of all the brands and still looked to be in extremely good condition. When considering the performance, the Knipex pliers seemed to be a terrific value at a price of around $45. The Lansky Knife Sharpener made the top 10 list in 2020, and once again, it made the list for 2021. At a price of around $70, it's very affordable for a sharpening system compared to some of the other brands like the Wicked Edge system that costs around $900. What's also very nice is that it's very compact and doesn't take up too much space. Some of the other brands are just a lot bigger and heavier. To test the sharpness of the knives, I bought a knife sharpness tester. I also bought brand new high carbon stainless steel chef's knives for the testing. The knife sharpness tester came with the sharpness chart. The brand new chef's knives happened to be very sharp. In fact, they were as sharp as a utility knife with a sharpness rating of 135. So the knives needed to be dulled before testing the sharpener, so I built a test rig to dull the knives equally. All the knives had the same amount of weight on top of them, and they made five back and forth passes over the aluminum pipe. A look at the dulled knife blade under the microscope shows a really bad dulled edge. I once again tested the sharpness of the dulled knives, and they were almost as dull as a butter knife at 1,160. Trying to set up and use some of the knife sharpeners is pretty complicated. Some of the brands even have some very long instructional videos on how to use user systems, but the Lansky is extremely quick and easy to set up and use. After sharpening, the knife edge looks amazing. What's more impressive is that the Lansky sharpener actually sharpened the knife edge to 95, which is sharper than the new knife. It almost performed as well as the $900 Wicked Edge system, which did slightly better at 85. Knives are oftentimes used on cutting boards, which can quickly dull a knife edge. 
To test the blade edge durability, all the sharpened knives made 30 back and forth passes over a piece of wood. After they made the passes, I once again tested the sharpness of the knives. The Lansky started out at 95 and then did a great job of maintaining a sharp edge at 135, outperforming several more expensive brands. Even after 30 passes, it's just as sharp as the new chef's knives before the testing began. So for around $70, the Lansky is a great sharpening system that can allow just about anyone to form a sharp and durable knife edge. At a price of $170, the Gulu 4000 Jump Starter definitely deserves to be on the top 10 list. In the first test, the jump starters had to first endure a very challenging bench test to compare cranking amp performance. The carbon pile tester provided both the volts as well as cranking amps for the jump starters. And the Gulu 4000 performed very well in this test at 619 amps at 7.6 volts, which is the best of all the brands. In the second test, the jump starters were used to jump start a Ford Ranger with a V6 engine and a badly drained battery. I disconnected the ignition system to prevent the truck from starting. Some of the jump starters didn't even deliver enough cranking amps to get the engine spinning over at all. Others were able to get the engine spinning just fast enough to start the truck for a very short period of time. However, the Gulu 4000 had the engine spinning as fast as a truck's battery when it was fully charged. And the Gulu 4000 just wouldn't quit and after 15 seconds I ended the test to avoid causing damage to the starter on the truck. Several of the jump starters did a pretty good job of jump starting the Ford Ranger with a 2.9 liter V6 engine. However, jump starting a 4.2 liter diesel engine and a vintage Ford tractor proved to be far more challenging. Using the same battery that was in the Ford Ranger, some of the brands weren't able to get the engine spinning. Others were able to get the engine spinning barely fast enough to start under perfect weather conditions. Once again, the Gulu 4000 got the diesel engine spinning fast enough to start for around 8 seconds. In the final test, the jump starters were placed in a freezer set to very close to 0 degrees Fahrenheit. The jump starters spent the night in the freezer just to make sure that they were all fully chilled. Most of the batteries required several attempts to allow them to warm up enough to work, but some of the brands just weren't able to handle the cold temperature. After giving the Gulu a couple of warm-up swings, the Gulu got the engine spinning fast enough to get it going. Many of the jump starters tested can be used as power packs to charge cell phones and power up other USB devices. I applied a 6 amp load to all the jump starters to measure battery capacity. Once again, the Gulu 4000 came out on top at 67.1 watt hours and over 12 watt hours more than the second place finisher. Also making the top 10 list is the Milwaukee M18 Fuel Drill. On the front of the packaging, Milwaukee makes a pretty bold claim saying it can deliver up to 60% more power. It also claims to be up to an inch and a half shorter than the competition. Sometimes manufacturers tend to get a little carried away with their claims, but not in this case. At approximately seven inches from front to back, the Milwaukee was the shortest drill in the lineup and it was two inches shorter than the longest and most expensive drill. To test a claim that Milwaukee makes up to 60% more torque than the competition, I attached an inline torque adapter to a socket. Each of the drills were given a chance to drive in a massive 10 inch long lag bolt. Using first gear gave every drill the best chance to do well and some of the brands gave up only after about a second of trying and under 200 inch pounds of maximum torque. Others didn't immediately give up but were very slow to drive the lag bolt. The Milwaukee absolutely crushed this test nearly driving the lag bolt all the way into the board and reaching 468 inch pounds of torque. It claims to deliver up to 60% more power and it actually did even better than claimed compared to several of the other brands. I then tested the drills to see how quickly they could drive in 5 inch lag bolts. Once again, even though the Milwaukee is very compact in size, it still performed very well averaging about 5.5 seconds, just barely finishing behind the Makita's 5.2 second average. To test endurance, the drills attempted to spin over a small engine for 2 minutes in high gear. The spark plug was removed, but the engine brake was applied, making this an impossible task for most of the brands. However, the Milwaukee had no problem getting started and finishing the entire two-minute test. Considering the compact size and the very high torque delivery, the Milwaukee is a great drill. The Malco calls their locking pliers the Eagle Grips, and it definitely seems to be a great description for their locking pliers. In the first test, I clamped the locking pliers onto a smooth portion of a grade 5 bolt. I then used a rounded nut extractor to fasten to the tension screw. The adjustment screws were tightened to 120 inch pounds. Unfortunately, not all the brands could handle 120 inch pounds of torque on the tension screw. The teeth on other locking pliers were just not very sharp and were just too soft to gain a good grip. Even other brands perform well, but they experience a lot of wear and tear to the teeth. However, the Malco Eagle Grips just totally crushed the competition, reaching 1,053 inch-pounds of torque before losing grip, but not before shredding the bolt. The teeth in the Malco really held up well, experiencing a very small amount of wear. So Malco finished the first round of the competition over 300 inch-pounds of torque more than the second place finisher. In the second round of competition, I tested the cutters on the locking pliers. Several of the brands aren't equipped with cutters and couldn't participate, but the Malco pliers were able to cut through a 16-penny nail requiring 173 inch-pounds of squeezing force. While the Eagle Grips didn't finish in first, there's no visible damage to the cutters. The locking pliers then competed to see which brand offers the best front teeth gripping strength. 
I once again tightened the adjustment screw to 120 inch pounds. Most of the brands did a great job averaging just over 100 inch pounds, which is actually pretty good when all things are considered. However, the Eagle Grips applied the death grip on the bolt and finally lost traction at 209 inch pounds or 25% more torque than the second place finisher. In the third test, I torqued all the adjustment screws to 180 inch pounds to see how well they could gain a grip on a high carbon steel socket extension. The locking pliers then attempted to hold back the socket extension as the impact driver hammered away. Most of the locking pliers lost grip at less than 170 inch pounds, but the Malco Eagle Grips once again came out on top at 206 inch pounds. The teeth on the Eagle Grips held up very well with the best possible rating of one. In the final test, the adjustment screw was tightened on all the pliers until they broke. Half the brands broke at under 300 inch pounds of torque. Once again, the Eagle Grips came out on top at a very impressive 593 inch pounds. While the Eagle Grips are more expensive at around $45, they proved to be very capable and well worth the price. For only around $35, the No-Cry screwdriver is a great value. The No-Cry also comes with driver bits and even a flexible extension. With a variable speed trigger, it offers very good low speed control at only 16 RPM. In the first test, 15 brands of screwdrivers drove in three drywall screws and a 2x4 lumber. And the No-Cry made easy work of the drywall screws, averaging around 2.5 seconds. The No-Cry finished in fifth position after the first round of competition. However, all of the brands that drove in the drywall screws faster did cost more. In the second round of competition, the screwdrivers attempted to drive in a 5-inch lag bolt. I placed an inline torque adapter on the screwdrivers to measure the maximum torque. Some of the brands really struggled producing less than 10 inch pounds of maximum torque. However, the No-Cry did by far the best of all the brands at 35 inch pounds. In the final test, the screwdrivers tried to rotate an old electric drill that was unplugged. Things didn't go so well for some of the brands, but the No-Cry performed very well, nearly making it the entire five minutes. Of all the brands tested, the No-Cry was only one of two brands tested that offered both a variable speed trigger and a clutch. Considering the price tag and the performance, the No-Cry seems like a great value. If you're in need of a circular saw blade that cuts fast and is durable enough to cut through some nails, you might want to check out the Evolution saw blade. I put together a really simple test setup to test the blades. The saw is on a set of rollers that fits onto a track. The saw is in a perfectly straight line to prevent the blade from binding. The bottom of the saw hovered just over top of the wood to keep contact friction from becoming a factor in the testing. A five pound weight and a pulley system pulled the saw through the cut. The saw was perfectly aligned with the pulley. All the saws made three passes through clean two by fours to establish an average baseline time. Before coming into contact with the nails, the Evolution established a baseline cut speed of 2.19 seconds, which was slightly slower than the Master Force and the Spider Blades. The blades then competed to see which brand could cut through two by fours that had 30 16 penny nails embedded. And the Evolution made quick work of cutting through the 30 nails with just three passes, taking an average of 5.16 seconds and finished slightly slower than the Hercules and the Diablo. After cutting through boards that had 30 nails, the blades once again cut through a clean 2x4 and the Evolution made the cut in only 4.4 seconds for the second fastest time. The blades then made three passes through shingles and then they cut through some deck screws. So after cutting through 30 nails, shingles, and deck screws, I once again tested the saw blades on a clean 2x4. And the Evolution came out on top with the fastest time of only 6.0 seconds. After all of the testing, the Evolution showed a 178% increase in the amount of time it needed to cut through clean 2x4s, the best of all the brands. At a price of around $33, the DeWalt 25-foot tape measure is a great value. It claims to offer a 13 feet of standout, a very tough blade coating, and the ability to survive a 60-foot drop. In the first test, the tape measures competed for the longest reach using a 16.5 degree angle on this tester. And the Dwelt only came up short by an inch and a half of the 13 feet of reach for a second place finish behind the climb. To test blade marking durability, I put together a test jig with 800 wet or dry sandpaper. To help prevent the sandpaper from becoming clogged, I sprayed water on the tape measure blade and the sandpaper. I also applied 10 pounds of weight on the arm of the tester to apply a downward force. After 60 passes, some of the tape measure brands experienced a lot of damage and lost their markings. However, after 60 back and forth passes with the DeWalt, it still looks as good as new. The DeWalt was only one out of four brands to receive a perfect five out of five score for abrasion resistance. When tape measures are around a lot of dirt and dust, they can really struggle to retract the tape and even stop retracting the blade altogether. The tapes were first tested for retraction speed before exposed to sawdust, sand, and drywall screws. The tape measures were then placed inside of an ammo can and shaken vigorously for five minutes. Once again, the tape measures competed for retraction speed and performance. Unfortunately, some of the tape measures would no longer fully retract. However, the DeWalt performed just as quickly as it did when new and didn't slow down. 
The belt hook on the DeWalt also proved to be the most user-friendly while also offering very good belt clip strength. In the final test, the tape measures were dropped from 12 feet with a piece of PVC pipe attached for extra weight and to direct the angle of impact to the most sensitive part of the tape measures. Most of the tape measures did experience some damage to either the hook or the blade lock buttons. However, the DeWalt held up really well with only minor scratches to the case. At around $100, the Gronberg 12-volt chainsaw sharpener actually made a chainsaw chain perform better than a new chain. What's nice about the Gronberg is that you don't have to remove the chain from the saw. It's nearly effortless as the 12-volt battery does most of the work for you. To test the chains, I first had to dull them, cutting through some logs that had fallen or trees that needed to come down. After doling all the chains, I cleaned them with lye to prepare them for sharpening. I then tested the chains using a battery-powered Makita chainsaw. I had a bunch of batteries on hand to make sure that I could use fully charged batteries for each test. I sharpened the chains and then tested the cutting speed through six 4x4s. I took the average cut speed after making three passes. After the first round of competition, the Gronberg came out on top at 9.78 seconds. The new chainsaw chain actually performed slightly better than all the brands at 8.4 seconds at this point in the testing. However, I then spent about three and a half hours resharpening all the chains to give every chainsaw sharpener the best chance to perform the best. In the second round of competition, all of the chainsaw sharpeners did a better job sharpening the chains. This time, the Gronberg file system barely edged out the battery-powered sharpener at 7.74 seconds. However, the 12-volt Gronberg system did nearly as well at 8 seconds. When considering the performance and the speed of how quickly it can sharpen a chain, the 12-volt Gronberg seems like a great value. If you want to see the complete video of the products in this video, check out the video description for a link. Also, 2022 looks to be a very interesting year with the upcoming projects. However, I'm always looking for new video ideas. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.